So the next topic of discussion is rounding. Now, all of you know how to round. You've learned that back in elementary school. But the type of rounding that we teach students in the elementary level is a traditional style of rounding. However, with scientific disciplines such as physics, or if you happen to work in the financial industry, bankers rounding is the preferred method. And the reason has to do with error. Now, traditional rounding, the type that you've known for many, many years, this type of rounding has an inherent flaw. Now, the rule is that if you have a number between one and four, you round that down. If you have a number between five and nine, you round up. That's a fairly straightforward rule, but there's an imbalance. And here is the imbalance that I'm referring to. Basically, when rounding, you have nine opportunities for rounding, where the number that ends with a one all the way through nine, right? So that's nine opportunities in total. The way traditional is set up is that there's only a four out of nine chance that you're going to be rounding down, whereas there's a five out of nine chance that you're going to round up. That particular imbalance is going to generate what we call inflation. And that's because statistically speaking, you're rounding up more often than you are rounding down. And in the long term, that can cause problems. And the reason why is that the more calculations that you have and the more rounding that you are doing with those calculations, those values end up creeping up. As they creep up, the new rounded values are drifting further away from the actual value. Now, you can imagine that being a major problem with the financial sector. If we went with the traditional rounding in the financial sector, after doing tens of thousands of calculations, the numbers that you would have on the books, so to speak, would be larger than the actual amount that you would have in your accounts. And that's just an untenable situation. So there needed to be a different technique developed to prevent or at least mitigate this amount of inflation. So that's where we get bankers rounding. So let's talk about how bankers rounding works. Now, bankers rounding isn't radically different than traditional rounding. So for example, we still round down if we have a number between one and four. The rule changes here. Instead of five and above, it's six and above. So six to nine, we round up. Now, what that does is that balances out the rounding a bit. So now we have a four out of nine chance of rounding down and a four out of nine chance of rounding up. Now, the obvious thing is, what do you do when you have a five? Well, now with a five, what we're going to do is we're going to split the difference. So with the five, you're actually either going to round down or you're going to round up. And it's about 50-50. So how do we know? Well, here's the basic rule for this. So the decision to round up or down is based on what the final answer is going to look like. So we either round the number up or we round it down so that the final rounded number is even. And that's the key. That's how we decide so that the final number is going to be an even number. Let me give you an example. So let's take a look at 2.5, for instance. Now, 2.5, there's two ways that we could go, and it would be equal amounts of rounding error. We could either round down to a 2, or we could round it up to a 3. Now, of course, traditionally, we just rounded up to 3, but now we have a decision. We're either going to round it down and leave it as a 2, or round it up to 3. The deciding factor is that we have to choose which one of these values here, which one gives us an even number, and that's obviously two. So we reject the three. So 2.5 becomes two. What if we have something like 7.5? Now with 7.5, there are two options. We can leave it as a seven or we can round it up to an eight. Again, the deciding factor is which one is the even number. And that of course is the eight. So we reject the seven. And that's all there really is to it. That's the decision that you make. If it ends in a five, you either round up or down so that the final answer is even. Now, the question is, why do they pick even numbers as opposed to, say, odd numbers? Because it really doesn't matter. We could have made the, um, the qualification the odd numbers. Well, the main reason why is even numbers have the ability to be divided by two without introducing fractions. So that's the advantage. So that's what makes sense because then if you have it as an even number, and you have to do, say, division by two a little bit later, that means we don't introduce even more decimal places and more opportunities to round. And that's basically it. So let's focus on 
some more specific examples with a little bit more detail because this terminating five rule gets a little bit more complex when we have to round off several decimal places. So let's take a look. What we're going to do is we're going to round everything to the right of this red line. So when we round everything to the right of this red line, what's going to happen here is these two columns are going to stay. This column is going to disappear. So when we look at 4.2, if we take a look at 4.2, by rounding down, it stays even. If we round it up, this would become a 4.3, not even. So we round down to make it stay as an even number. Now let's take a look at this one. So that five there, so 7.75. So we are either going to round this up to a six or leave it as a five. We're going to round it up to a six because the six is an even number. Now let's take a look at this next example. So with this one here, we're rounding off not just a five, but we're rounding off a five zero. Well, this five rule still applies. And the reason why it still applies is because this is basically the same as 50 out of 100, which reduces down to five out of 10. So this is still the halfway mark. So even if it ends with the, the stuff that we're rounding off as a five zero, that's still halfway. So it's just as close to round up as it is to round down. So since we have an eight here, that means that we round it down and leave it as a 90.78. So again, we have an even number. Now let's take a look at this next example. So 45.99. Okay, so that's a five there. So we have to decide whether we're going to round up or down. Well, if we round down, that stays a nine. So we have to round up. Well, if we round that up, that nine becomes a zero. Then when you carry the one, that nine becomes a zero. And then when you carry the one, this becomes a six and so on and so forth. So we have 46.00. Now these two zeros, they need to stay because they're part of the measured amount. Um, so that is something later we're going to talk about called significant, uh, these are what are called significant figures. And we're going to explore that after this little section here. So let's take a look at the next example here. So now we've got 3.45 and a bunch of zeros. Well, when we take a look at just this section here, this is more or less 50 million. Okay. So if we have 50 million, that's halfway to a hundred million. So if we reduce this down to a fraction and we cancel out all these zeros, Again, it's basically five out of 10. So it's still halfway. The halfway rule still applies. And that four stays a four. But what happens if we add a one? If we add a one to the end, this is no longer halfway. We are now, this one just pushes us past that halfway mark. And as a result, that means we are actually closer to the five as opposed to the four. So that's why this, we round up to turn into a five because that last digit there determines that we are just slightly past the halfway point. And as a result, we have to round up. All right, so the next question is, does this really make that much of a difference in terms of your data? Well, we got an example for you. So let's take the data set 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, and we're gonna add those numbers up. So when we add these numbers up, they add up to 12, and that's the original value. Let's take a look what happens when we do traditional rounding. When we do traditional rounding, that 1.5 becomes a two, that 2.5 becomes a three, 3.5 becomes a four, and that 4.5 becomes a five. So this is how we have been taught to do it. Now, when you add those numbers up, we get 14. And as you can see, the value is inflated. Now, if we use the banker's rounding, this 1.5 becomes a two, this 2.5 stays out of the two, this 3.5 goes up to a four, and this 4.5 stays at a four, even, 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 even. And when we add them up, that gives you a 12. And as you can see, we get no inflation. So banker's rounding does help to prevent this inflation problem because over time, generally speaking, you're more likely, if the more uh, results you have, that you're uh, more measured quantities that you have, um, statistically, you're probably going to be rounding up equal number of times as you're rounding down. It's never going to be exactly equal and it's never going to be exactly perfect, but it's better than doing the traditional, which always is going to add inflation. 